Welcome to this Q&A for the 2020 edition of New Directors, New Films, a co-presentation of film at Lincoln Center and the Museum of Modern Art. Uh, I'm Dennis Lim, uh, co-chair of the selection committee, and I am delighted to be joined by Camilo Restrepo, the director of Los Conductos. Hi, Camilo. Hi, hi, Dennis. How are you doing? And how everyone who is watching the video? Thank you for being part of this uh, rescheduled virtual edition of the festival. <laughs> um, the film premiered um, at the Berlinale earlier this year where you won the prize for best first feature, I believe. Um, and it's been, I'm happy to say, it's been picked up for US distribution by Grasshopper Film. So hopefully those of you who've been able to see the film this way, we'll also be able to catch it um, as it should be seen on cinema screens next year once we have cinemas back up and running in New York. Um, but anyway, uh, Camilo, thank you. Crossing again. fingers. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Thank, <laughs> no, thank you. Thanks to you. Thanks to you and to all the committee for selecting my film. I'm, 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 I feel I'm super, I'm, 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 I'm super glad. <laughs> well, I, I, for me, it's it's one of the films of the year, so um, I'm, well, I'm I'm thrilled that it's part of the part of this edition. Um, maybe you could start. Um, presumably, people who are watching this have already seen the film, but um, maybe you could just start by telling us a little bit about how this came about and how you met um, the central character, the lead actor, Pinky, who's somebody you've known for some years. Yeah, 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 sure. So Los Conductos is a fiction film that is based in a real story. It's the story of the main character of the film who is not an actor, he's my friend Pinky. So I met Pinky eight years ago or more or less that window of time. And um, over the time we worked together in several films. Uh, he was being one of my actors, I mean, I was, he was in the image or, and, and in other films, he was like part of my crew in Colombia. And then when we were working together, he once told me that he was, um, he was involved into a religious sect for over eight years. And over there, he was manipulated by a guy, like a leader, who was called uh, the father by the by, by the members of the sect and uh, under like spir spiritual goals he was manipulated these guys uh, these disciples uh, for for material purposes so pinky once one day realized that he was being like uh, caught into this web and he managed uh, to escape and one day he told me that he got like what fixed idea in his head. And this one was that he wanted to kill the father because he thought that uh, by doing this, committing a crime, committing a crime, of course, by, but committing a crime was, was a way of, of releasing or avoiding this guy to, to seduce and manipulate other young, young people like him. So it was like a bad, bad, good thing to do to, mm -hmm. to kill this father. So we, we talk a lot about like the consequences of such an act. And then I decided that I wanted to help him to kill the father, of course. So we were going to do it both, but in a fiction film. And so that's the way we started, started to think about um, uh, Los Conductos. Mm -hmm. The starting point of the film is, of course, this uh, fictional murder, but that was not really my purpose of the film. My purpose was to imagine or, or, or lead Pinky to imagine what could have been his life if he had uh, satisfied uh, this mm -hmm. desire of revenge. Right. So, so let's talk a bit about how, how, you, how you build out the film from this basis in reality, this basis in, you know, in, in Pinky's life, you, you flesh out the, the world of the film in, 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 in many ways, but I think one striking way is the way in which you introduce many borrowed, like fictional and, and literary elements. You have the story about the lame devil, you have this poem by Gonzalo Arango, you have the figure of the clowns who I think are from this, the popular TV show. Can you say a little bit about how you built out the world of Los Conductos, you know, starting with, with Pinky's life and then, and then creating all these other, other, bringing all these other elements? Yes, I was certain from the 
very beginning of the film that I don't, I didn't want, I didn't want to make like a realistic uh, uh, film, like using mm. the effect of realism on the film. I wanted something more, uh, how you say, more, more linked to, not to fantasy, but more linked to to a reflection, to a state of mind. Mm -hmm. Because my idea was not only to uh, represent what Pinky uh, lived uh, uh, in, the, in, in the religious sect, but was to represent or, 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 or to approach um, um, uh, Pinky's mind. I mean, the state of mind in, in which he was uh, manipulated and in which he was losing control of uh, of knowing what was real and fake or what was the truth or, 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 or lie. So I tried to imagine that uh, Pinky was not the only victim of this moral problem of not knowing not knowing good and bad where is where are the limits of things and that i was um, probably able to construct a film st with a starting point of the on this on on on, on pinkish experience but uh, develop this experience into a meditation of the whole country mm -hmm. what wh why is so difficult to understand in colombia where are the limits between bad and and, and, and good how are they use uh, these, these these lines of frontiers so that's the way i decided to uh, to include into the film other aspects from colombia including uh, an historical character known as uh, Revenge, mm -hmm. who was like a bandit in the in the forties, and also these clowns from a TV show in the eighties. Different different elements that were as pink, different characters that they, that were as pinky, uh, um, questioning the borders between uh, fake and true, good and bad, lie and lies and and truth. Right. So to come back to something you, you, you mentioned, like what, can you say a bit about what it's like, what it was like to work with Pinky? This, what is this process of directing him? What is this collaborative process in which you're making a film that fictionalizes his life? And what happens, what happened to his desire for revenge as it becomes, you know, sort of sublimated into this filmmaking process? Yeah. Well, actually, um, we we. I mean, we were working. We were like trying to create a film for over two or three years. We were like discussing about this possible future of this possible image of this character Pinky, who was not the real Pinky, already satisfied, and what is going to what was going to become his new life, his new life into society back to society after after escaping from the sect and we were trying to imagine how to how this idea of future could fit into the real person pinky how how could he imagine by himself uh, another another possibility of life because he was like living in the borders of society and always going further and further to these borders i mean he was uh, in, um, into drug addiction and he was becoming like um, a, a person a harmless person uh, mm -hmm. uh, without not money without job and without anything so we were not able to imagine this future of like a a better pinky and instead of that i was just seeing how he was becoming every day uh, more abandoned more abandoned to the situation um so one day i decided that we had to shoot the film immediately not even having enough money to shoot the film because it was no for me it was no option to shoot the film with a, with an actor the idea was to make a film with Pinky, for Pinky, for me, for us. For, but the idea was it, that he has to represent himself. It was like for me a good value for the film to say to someone, you have to take in charge your own desires and we have to put them in front of the camera. And you're going to see what's the image that you have of you. And then 
you will probably have another image of you and uh, be able to project a new future. Mm. So um, I contacted Pinky and Pinky was extremely bad. So I asked a friend to go look for him into the street, to the streets, put him into a hotel room. And then I told him that I gave him three months to stop drugs, to live like a normal person. And then I, I was going three months after that with a crew and we were making the film. So we had no real uh, script or whatever. We were like, I had like a list of things to do, but like the process was, was accelerated suddenly. And then uh, Pinky's response was super positive. And, 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 and he was like, um, completely into the film i mean he and 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 it was like a, a kind of light um in, in into the tunnel like the conduct of the film like under the the idea of the film well the, the film was a light on, 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 for for him in his life mm. now, now he's a, a completely different person can you say a little bit about this theme that runs through the film of um doubling duplication like the original and the copy um you know that's something that that um sort of recurs in different ways throughout the film and i'm, I'm wondering how that how that how that just took shape for you yeah well that's uh that's a very tough question that is <laughs> sorry <laughs> yeah. i'm sure you have an answer <laughs> oh thanks you're very confident well it's even i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm gonna take the question even even further, mm -hmm. <laughs> saying probably that and this duplication is also dubbing into the film. Mm -hmm. It is a film without sound. I mean, we shoot yeah. the film without sound, and then all the voices are dubbed after mm -hmm. in post production. So there was also we made it once, and then we made it a second, to a yeah. second, a second, a second time more over. So there's always this duplication into the film. Uh, why? Because I, because I, I think that it is important in a film to understand that um, it is not reality; it is a representation. It is a vision of reality. It is it is like a mirror of 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 of, of real life, but it is not the real life. And I really admire the kind of films in which you you can. Um, see the 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 um, the mechanics of the film into the film, mm -hmm. because because then the film is asking you to have like a critical a critical um, a, a critical point of view towards towards it. It is always telling you don't believe to me. You don't have to believe to me because I'm fake. I'm I'm a double. I am not reality. Even if I'm showing the re the, re the life of a real or of a real person, this is not his real life. He's interpreting himself, mm -hmm. and I am directing himself. So duplication was important for me in this in the sense of having a distance from reality, and also you know the, the problem of the film is to be manipulated. Mm -hmm. And manipulation is also something that you do with your hands. I mean, it's crafting someone also, it's crafting. So into the film, there is this signature of craft making, of yeah. making the film into craft. Though, so there's always this, 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 this craft making of the film inside the film. So can you just tell us a bit more about how you worked with um sound then so you shot the film silent and then constructed the sound separately after or yeah. how, how was that um yeah um, um so we shot the film soundless we you only use like a, a very low record record the machine for the dialogues or, or only for the voices but only on on those moments and uh, it was needed only just to have like a, an idea of what we said, because there was <laughs> some kind of improvisation, just to be able to to make a reconstruction of, of what happened into the set when we were shooting the film. But everything in the film is fake uh, in the same in the sense of, of fake. I mean, fake. It's a, it's probably a very big word, but it's like. Um, 
it's 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 constructed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and, um, all the all the all the all the noises i mean all, even skin noises even even not only words uh, machines w w everything that you have there is is it's also a cre creative process of of sound because i i believe that sound is not like a, something that that has to be captured at the moment when you're shooting an image it is not like little brother of 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 mm -hmm. images it is something independent that could be also um, mm, more much narrative than image. And in the film, I try to use narrative a, nar a narrative sound in some scenes. Uh, but instance, when you hear uh, the sound of the motorbike, but what you are seeing are just um, uh, leaves on a tree. Yeah. Th th then you're 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 understanding that there there's an action where where the image is in it's on it's it's quiet nothing is happening yeah this is i think this approach sort of connects to some of your short films um as well i think in which sound is so important musicality voice um rhythm is, is so important as well um and i'm wondering if you can say a bit i mean i think people people who who are watching who have watched los conductos may be familiar with your short films many of which we've we've shown over the years you know impression of a war and then seal house um la bouche like what this um this did you was making the move to a narrative feature like uh did you did you approach this film any differently from from the short works or did you see this as an opportunity to sort of maybe bring together the, you know, different formal approaches from your previous films. I think that I think that I have. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm. I was trying to make something different from the from the from the short films, to have like a new approach, and in in. Just to link this question to the to the sound and to the voice, mm -hmm. I remember that my first my first short film, at the very beginning of the, of the short film, is uh, the first minute is a silent film, and then there are no real voices. There are things like they are written into the into the into the image, and then in the second film, I I put my voice off into the film. And then I, I, I moved towards a singing voice that were that was not mine, uh, making musical musical films. And then my reaction was to move away from sound and make a film a film soundless. Um, and that's why I decided like to shoot this way, because I was using so much sound on the on the previous short films that I wanted to try something else. Or to construct the, the, the sound non uh, in in a performative way, but in a real, very meditated way. Um, the question of the land is, is I think, is only a um, it's, 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 it's as simple as the question of, of of a painter when you ask him why he used like a, a bigger canvas because he needed probably to put more things inside. I think that's uh, probably more or less what I can say. And it's not, it sounds like naive, but it, it is not. I mean, because we, we, we try to consider the length of the films in a commercial way. We try, we try, we, we try to, to we, we normally, I mean, filmmakers, they decide, I have to make a 90 minutes film. And then what I'm going to put inside these 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was that was not the way I wanted to 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 to, to proceed. I wanted just to to see the materials that I that I had, and 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 then oh well that that's gonna be uh, seventy minutes. Okay, that's the length. I mean, the container was not before the con the content. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, so you, you've talked a bit about how you approach sound in Los Conductos. Um, I'm wondering if you can say a little bit about how you approached um, image um, in this film. I mean, there's very, again, something we associate with your other work is this very strong materiality, this sort of really textured image. Um, you talked about just the sense of like, you know, something made by hand, something crafted. And, and that's something that I think um, comes across in all your all your work, but there's also a very striking um, 
sense of you know composition and 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 color in in the film and 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 which seems to connect to to sort of your your background in you know the visual arts yeah that's right i think that all my influences come from painting because i wanted to become a painter first so i have like this knowledge of of, of, of of history of painting and this practice of using the materials and i was first I, I for years i was concentrated in just making one single image before going to 24 images per second so i had all these like um, this special approach of of of, of knowing that, that that i can what is what is to frame what is to put inside and 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 um I, I I I remember that when I was uh, a painter, I I liked it a lot the diptychs, one painting next to another, because I consider that in in between those paintings there was like a something uh, um, a space which is like a, a lack, something missing, but this lack was re relating both. And, and 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 then I, I when I passed to to make films, I, I understood that that was uh, uh, the process of editing, but the process of editing was not to filling the space; it was just to showing that there is a space from one scene to another, because it is very important to have this emptiness in between. This emptiness is the space for imagination; it is not the space for image. Mm -hmm. So, so this is this is something that I can give to the audience. I mean, to 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 let them this possibility to create what is not already uh, shown in the in the, in the film. Right. So, 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 so when you, when you see the editing process, I mean, it's it's very basic. I mean, it's one image after the other. There are not really too many effect effects. And when there are effects, they are like really material effects like this one. Or instead of making something or something artificial, then I print a fabric. Or and 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 part of the crew were, was becoming mad because I was like uh, passing a lot of time just to cleaning surfaces or or painting the 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 the, the, the decors of the film. So they were talking, but why are you doing this? You have to direct us to do that. And I was saying, no, it's impossible. I have to do this because I only, I only, I only think with materials. My my, my head is, is 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 linked to to my hands, and I and I have to, and I can build a film if I have materials. And materials are, are also persons in this way. I mean, Pinky is also a material of the film in a way. Yeah. Um, so I, I wanted to come back to something that you've mentioned um, already a couple of times, which is this this desire to break from uh, realist language and realist style, and, and this rejection of of realism. Um, it's it's an aesthetic choice, but it also seems to be a political one, maybe. So I'm wondering if you can talk about you know this position of of wanting to break away from the realist style, which is the dominant one, you know, which is like typically what we, it is, it has become the language of so much of cinema today. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, I think that you make images against other images. Um, making images is also, I, I, I think this, in this sense, making images is try to erase some other images. Um, so it is in a certain way, a political act. And in my case, I'm, I'm a Colombian filmmaker. And, you know, we have a lot of representations of Colombia, always in the same way. And we have even a super, super big um, films and TV series about my home country. So these images have built a kind of um, a paradigm of Colombia. Mm -hmm. You know, like an image which is fixed in, in our brains and we cannot move away to see another frame of that. Mm -hmm. So going away from there is moving away from the paradigm, is, 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 is breaking the barriers that have been made to have one official and fixed image of what is the Colombian reality. Mm 
And this is something linked to a film is not reality. A film and my film, when, when we talk about like uh, duplication, is a film of, 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 of duplication, is a film of, of amplification too. You know, in the film, there are things that become bigger yeah. and the character is duplicated also, like, a car like in the carnival, you know, like, like showing the reality, but in another way, in an amplificated way, like, uh, like the clowns and like the satire, when they use the satire and the clowns are crying, uh, are yelling, clowns are, are gesticulating a lot, but, but because they are showing in an amplificated way, what it's what is so tiny or so normal in our life that we don't, uh, we are not more able to see and to watch. So that's that's probably my point of view, my my, my first idea of why I am against um, realism. Yep. And also we have to we have to we have to think that realism is an effect. It's, it's it's something mm -hmm. that you that, that is created for you to believe there is reality, reality, but is but it is not. It's a, it's, it's 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 an effect. Yeah. So um, you know, just lastly, I'm 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 wondering how how this year has been for you and, and what you're working on now. <laughs> I mean, you you know, you premiered the film at, at one of the last big real world festivals, and and then we all sort of you know. We were expecting to bring you to New York in March, and of course, we went into I was hoping into so lockdown. Much <laughs> um, but but you know, we'll, we'll we'll do that at some point. But I'm just wondering, have you been have you been working since? Have you been you know has the film been traveling virtually, and and what what's it been like? Uh, well, I, I I think I'm lucky because I I mean. I need to be like alone and concentrated for a long time. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm living locked down uh, for years. <laughs> so this, <laughs> and I, and I really like it. So I, I'm, I'm lucky because I have a lot of things to do, like being into this and, and these things I, 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 I was telling you that I, I wanted to make this film um, in a certain way, in response to the short films, just to make another thing in a different way. So um, um, in the first lockdown, I, I, I felt like I needed to work in a different way again, I, that I wanted to, I needed to work again against me, against my, my commodities. So I decided to write a script because I have never done it. So I wrote a script for a feature film which um, it's already done. <laughs> so a new one. And then we have been through a second lockdown here in France. So I changed my mind and I decided that probably I have to make something right now, very concrete, very low budget, but I have to shoot something. Uh, just because shooting is also... Uh, it's also going away from reality. I mean, I can be locked down, but I need to be thinking about something else away. So, so uh, I'm, 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 I have started recently a new project, like a very, very small project, not very ambitious, but, but I think that the, the, the moment is like to, to move forward, not to move with a lot of ambitions, but just to be to this movement. Um, so I'm, um, this is like uh, my idea of making fitness at home, <laughs> mental health <hip> fitness. <laughs> Great. Uh, that's, that's good to know uh, that you've, you've, good had to know. A, you've had a productive uh, year, unlike, unlike some of us. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. But um, anyway. I didn't mean uh, to be mean. <laughs> no, no. It's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's good to see you, um, albeit virtually. And I hope that the next time we, we do uh, meet, it'll be in person and hopefully with an opportunity to show your films. Uh, on the yeah, I really hope. Again, I so. really hope because I really think that when you're into a screening room with, with other person, there is something special that that happens it, it could not be it could not happen in, with a computer i mean i'm seeing you but i'm but but, but i'm missing you at the, in the same time <laughs> yeah, I, know. I remember seeing uh, your your premiere in berlin what a special screening that was so i'm hoping oh, yeah. we can we can recreate that for uh, our audiences uh before i really hope as well. it. yeah 
<laughs> so, so thank you, Dennis. Thanks, Camilo. And uh, thank you for the film. And, and uh, yeah, stay, stay well. And, and uh, we will we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. <laughs> to you.